Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Maida's short video series. In this video, we will be talking about changing support conditions for a bridge. So as you can see, here I am having a steel composite bridge and if we see the behavior of it as of now, so it is a continuous support. So if I just show the bending moment diagram, say for the dead load, you will easily see like this a continuous behavior like hogging moment are present at the support so it is not a simply supported but rather a continuous support which we are having for the bridge but in case I want to have a simply support behavior at this location so how to achieve that so in the program we are having beam and release option which is present in the boundary tab and here you will find the beam and release so using this beam and release we can just change the type of forces which are transferred to the subsequent elements and hence simulate any kind of behavior so in this case first I will activate the steel girder and we'll just go to the hidden mode like this I select these elements if I further select them like I want only the steel girders from one side So these are the five elements of the steel girder on which I'll be applying the beam and release. So if you see here, we are having the option to provide the beam and release for the different forces and the corresponding degree of freedom. So first I will create a boundary group with which this beam and release will be linked. So I go to the group option and here I just right click and create a new group of beam and release and I click on add now we select the beam and release group here and in this case I can assign the beam and release at the jth node the reason I'm assigning it on the jth node is because if you see the element local axis it is coming from like this is the i n while this is the j then you can see the x direction that will be pointing towards the j direction so here I just apply it you can see the small circle which are made showing the beam and release just on display it and activate all the elements now I need to activate this beam and release with the corresponding construction stage so if you see the stages for my bridge like first stage substructure is activated then the girder and the bracings so till this point suppose I'm having a simply supported behavior and then we are activating the wet concrete load to simulate the casting of the deck but once the deck has gained its strength like it has properly gained its strength it will provide contribute to the stiffness so in this case I can just assume like I'm having a continuous support because of the deck casting so in case I want to provide a continuous support later on at this stage so I can just deactivate the beam and release which I am activating so what we will do we will activate the beam and release group in the stage 2 while we will deactivate that in the stage 4 that is where the continuous action is coming because of the casting of the deck so we go to stage 2 and here under the boundary group I can just activate that here and I click on apply then I go to stage 4 and then I deactivate this beam and release and I click on ok so you can see that in stage 2 now under the boundary beam and release is present while if I go to stage 5 this beam and release is removed same goes with stage 4 now we will run the analysis and see the results we will be able to see the result of the bending moment diagram at the different stages and that will show you how the behavior and the structure behavior is changing and the force distribution is taking place for the bridge so we go to the bending moment diagram and let's choose stage 2 for the dead load now you can see like earlier this was you were able to see hogging moment but now you can see properly like the sagging moment is dominant with the simply supported behavior so that is how you can just change the way forces are distributed depending upon your bridge requirements 
then if I go to stage 4 and when I check the erection load 1 so you will see like the, these are the superimposed loads which are activated after the casting of the deck has taken place that is why like you will see a continuous behavior for the bending moment so with the help of beam and release you can achieve these kind of stages and when you check the post CS bending moment for your moving load so just to clarify here like we are checking MV max so that is why it is just showing the positive values for the girders people at times gets confused like why it is simply supported behavior but that is MV max then these are MV min and you can check MV all that will have the sagging and the hogging moment of the maximum values so whatever conditions we are having at the last stage of construction stages that's, that will be carried forward to my post CS analysis where moving load has been defined so I hope this video was helpful for you See you in the next.